So now we're going to use this statics problem solving method to solve a problem. So here is our problem. So we have a 100 kilogram mass that is hanging from two ropes that are attached to the ceiling. And it's important to note that this is 100 kilograms, which means we have a mass and we need to convert that to a weight because weight is a force and mass is just a property of an object. So in order to do that, we use the classic force equals mass times acceleration formula. And in this case, our mass is 100 kilograms and our acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And when we multiply those together, we get 980 newtons, and a newton is a unit of force that is equivalent to uh, kilogram meters per second squared. Kilogram times meters over second squared. So that is a newton. So now that we know that our weight of our object is 980 newtons, we can draw our free body diagram. So we have a force of 980 newtons going down, and then we have two tension forces, which are the forces being exerted by the rope um, acting against the weight. So we have, let me draw that at a little bit more of an angle. Okay. Imagine that those are actually different because they are at different angles. So we have a T1 force, and we know because of similar angles that this is also 60 degrees and this is also 30 degrees. So we can draw, take one more shot at making that more different. There we go. Okay, so we can draw a dotted line here to help see those angles. So we would say we have 60 degree angle here. And even though typically angles with vectors are measured from the positive x axis, so thinking about our angle being here, um, in this case, we are going to use the angle that is off of the negative x-axis, and then we will just keep track of the signs of the vectors ourselves. So this is a 30 degree angle, and this is t1, and this is t2. So now we can see all three of the forces that are acting on our object. And now we can do math with them. So the next step, now that we have our free body diagram, is to write our vectors out in rectangular notation. And we can start with the weight, which is kind of the easy one. So again, we use our notation to know that it's a vector. And this has, this is pointing straight down. So there's no X component. So we just say zero I hat. And then because it's pointing downwards, we say minus 980 j-hat. And we're going to drop the newtons for the moment, but it is super critical that at the end of the problem, the units go back onto the answers. So if it helps you to remember to keep newtons on at all stages of the process, then by all means do that because it's better to have more units than to forget them. Um, so now we're going to do our t1 force and for this one, this is where uh, these formulas come in handy. So we're going to say that the x component is t1 cosine of theta, which in this case is 60 degrees. And then it's going to the right, which is the positive direction. So we know that that is the case. And sometimes it can be helpful to actually draw in your x and y axes so that it's very clear what the directions are and what is positive. So we have 
positive going this way, and we also have positive going this way for our t1 vector, and so we will say that the y component, oh, but we need our i hat, plus t1 sine of 60 degrees, and that gives us our j hat y component. And now for t2, which is also a vector, we will do t2. Now, this is important because the the x component of this vector is actually pointed in the negative x direction. So it's important that we use the correct sign here. So we need to move this over slightly, actually, uh, and say minus t2 cosine of 30 degrees. So that's how we get away with using this 30 degree angle instead of the 160 degree angle that we would be using otherwise because, or 150, um, because we're putting this negative here. So now we add in our i hat and the y component of this vector is positive. So we can say plus t2 sine of 30 degrees j hat, and there's our y component. So now we have our three vectors written out. So we've done our first step and we've done our second step. And now we're going to move on to setting up the summation of the forces equations. So the summation of forces in the x. Um, I think it's important to always just set up a method of how you do these problems and then stick with it so that you don't get confused or mix yourself up. So I always do summation of forces in the x first, and then I do summation of forces in the y, and that usually helps me to not get my sines and cosines mixed up. So summation of forces in the x, our object is not moving, so we know that that's zero. And now we look for all of our x components. So in that case, that's this zero. We have our t1 cosine of 60 i hat, and then our negative t2 cosine of 60 i hat, or of 30 i hat. And we need to make sure that we remember to include all of the signs. So we'll just leave the zero out. Um, so we've got t1 cosine of 60 degrees. And at this point, we don't need the i hats anymore because they're all in the x direction. Minus t2 cosine of 30 degrees. OK, and then we do our summation of forces in the y, which also equals 0. And that is going to be our negative 980 and our positive t1 sine 60 and our positive t2 sine 30. So that will give us negative 980 plus t1 sine of 60. And in case you hadn't already realized this, your calculator should definitely be in degree mode, um, because otherwise, if you are calculating this in radians, you will get different numbers. And it looks like I need to move this down so I have a little more space. T2 sine of 30 degrees. OK, so now we have our two equations, and we can now start solving our system of equations. So first off, it looks like this top equation, if we look at basically what this means, it means that uh, looking at our free body diagram, we have two x components that are opposing each other, and because the object is not moving horizontally, we can infer that those two x components are equal to each other. 
And so that means that mathematically, we can go ahead and set those two things equal to each other. So we'll take the negative one and move it over to the other side of the equation. So we get t1 cosine of 60 degrees equals t2 cosine of 30 degrees. And move this down and give ourselves a little more room to work. So that means if we solve for t1, that we get t2 times cosine of 30 degrees over cosine of 60 degrees. So now we have something for one of our components. So now we can plug that into our equation for the other component. So looking at this equation, um, we see that we've got a negative 980 here that we could move to the other side. And if we do that, that puts us with 980 equal to T1 sine of 60 and T2 sine of 30. Now, we already know what T1 is from up here, so we can plug that in. So if we do that, here we will then have, oops, need a little more room. T2 cosine of 30 over cosine of 60. And so if we collapse some of that, so this whole thing is going to be equal to 1.5, believe it or not. And if you remember from trig, sine of 30 is 1 half. So um, if we factor this out a little bit so that we have T2 times cosine of 30 over cosine of 60 times the sine of 60, and then that whole thing is added to a sine of 30. All of that messiness adds up to 2, and we still have that on the other side equal to 980. So effectively, that means we have a much simpler equation, which is 2t2 equals 980, or t2 equals 490. And this, again, is where we remember to add back in our units. So now that we have a value for t2, we can come back up here and grab our equation for t1 and put that back in down here. And so if we plug in our value for t2 and this, now that gives us a value of 850 for T1. And so now we know the value of all of the forces that were in our free body diagram. So T1 was that 400, or is the 850, T2 is the 490, and then our weight is the 980, and we have solved our problem. And if you want to make your instructor really happy, you make sure to add your units, and then you box your answers so it's very clear where your answers are.